So here's what happens, guys, and this is a little bit about why you don't catch those big fish in late spring and summer. So your fish come in and they spawn. And everybody can go out in the springtime and be the greatest bass fisherman ever because those fish are up there shallow, they're looking through their spawning areas, guys are in there fishing that time, everybody's out, you know, end of April, May. Well, they're coming in contact with those bass. So say you had whatever it may be, this dock, and you caught a five pound largemouth off it, and my gosh, it was the greatest thing ever. And you continue to go back to that dock and pound it all year long. They're not there anymore. What's there are the smaller males. You fish shallow for the pike in the summertime, you're gonna catch hammer handles. You fish shallow for the walleye, you're gonna get those 14 to 18 inches. Hey, they're great eaters, okay? All these fish, the big females, once they come in and spawn, they move back out. Now we know that the walleye like to eat the rainbow trout. Pike's favorite forage is whitefish, okay? Whitefish come shallow in the spring, and they come shallow in the fall because the that's when they spawn. The rainbow trout come to the shoreline in the, in the late part of the year, in fall and in spring, because they're cruising, it's their temperature, they're working the shoreline looking for snails. So what happens, you have the spawn occur, all right? You've had perch reproduce, you've had pumpkin seed reproduce, you've had crappie reproduce, you've had pike, bass, everything's reproduced the exception of the fall fish like lake trout and whitefish. So now you have an abundance of food in the system. So that's one of the big problems. You have an abundance of food now, so there's more selection for them. The other thing that happens is all that food source that's up in there is this big, correct? Well, what they're doing, and I tell people this all the time, if you go out to Roosevelt in the middle of summer, and I did a, an angling academy last year, and I talked about this, and I had a guy come to me after that, that school was over, and said, I always wondered what was happening. Trolls for rainbow trout. He's out here in summertime getting eight, nine, 10 pound walleye, and he's catching them. When he brings his ball up, he's, all he's using is a flasher and a fly back here. When he goes to reset and he pops this loose, he's cranking this thing up through the water column. And he's catching those big fly, or those big walleye on a dodger and a fly. And he says, that is just the weirdest thing. I don't understand what's happening. Well, what's happening is these walleye are sitting out here in the thermocline. That's where the, the biggest source of food is at, because it's stuck in the densest portion of water. A thermocline is when you have a 0.5 degree temperature change per foot. Okay? You have a hypolimnium and an epilimnium, upper and lower, below that. That thermocline is the change in the center. The trout want to eat all these organisms up here. So they come up in here to feed, they go back down in here to 80 to 90 feet to rest and get away from the light. The walleye are intercepting them when they're up in here feeding, because that's what they want to eat. Well, he's cranking his stuff up through, intersecting that thermocline, which is in turn intersecting the walleye. While you and I and everybody else is going back to that same flat or same point in 10 to 12 feet of water because we caught a big one there before. They're not there. They've moved out. Pike and Coeur d'Alene Lake. You can go out in 100 feet of water and find pike on the bottom. You can find wolf packs of them cruising out suspended in 30 to 40 feet. Or you can find them on deep cabbage beds in 20 to 30 feet of water. Okay. They hold three different places. There's three different families that'll go out and do different things with pike. That's what makes them unique. So, this trout guy's out here fishing for what the walleye wants to eat, and that's why he's catching them. But for you and I to go out there and to try to dissect that, it's tough because it's an open basin. 100, 200 feet, no structure. What do you do? Well, you got to read your graph, and you got to spend a ton of time at it. That's why you don't intersect as many big fish in the summertime. Now the bass, he does the same thing in the spring. Like I said, their spawning time is later, guys. So it's the same process, it's just shifted a little bit. So now instead of going out in, say, February, like we're doing for the pike and the walleye, we're going out for the big bass, depending on the year, sometimes towards the end of March, little part of April, generally, when it happens. 
Water temperature is 39 to 42 degrees. Those percentage triangles where that deep water's at, where you have the big spawning area where they want to be, they're staging on top of those points, those deep points. So you're working a small area, chatterbaits, jigs, whatever it may be, fishing an isolated tree that's downed in that 25 to 30 feet of water. You're not always going shallow. And that preconceived notion of we always fish shallow for fish comes from watching a lot of southern shows. Well, their lakes are only 8 to 10 feet deep. All the oxygen is contained along the shoreline. That's why they're always fishing on the shoreline. Their water doesn't stratify in summer like ours. You don't have thermoclines like that. We have thermoclines that build up. That's what causes our fish to move out. Now with the bass, guys, you're going to catch your biggest fish oh, until the water temperature is hitting about 52, 53, and then you'll start catching more and more of the smaller fish. We catch some of our biggest fish between about 42 and 49 degrees. You know those big swim baits you always see? We throw the six to eight inch swim baits, which look like a rainbow trout, which they stock the lakes with, okay, high in protein. We fish those things around 46 to 49 degrees, fishing them along docks, along those percentage triangles in that deeper water because they want something that's going to be a big reward for their effort. If you look at this eraser, and you look at this pen, this is obviously bigger than this, correct? Well, what takes more energy to catch? Those of you who have been in these seminars know the answer. It takes the same amount of energy for a bass to catch this one or this one, because they're going to try just as hard for this as they are this. But the reward for this is greater than the reward for this. Okay? risk reward thing. So throwing those big swim baits, maybe in the morning time you were hitting the fish hard and then it slowed down. Well don't continue to throw the big swim bait. They've already fed, they're full, feed them something small now. You know where they're at, you've seen them on the docks, you've seen them along the brush, wherever it may be, now go to those areas and finesse fish them. Use a straight tail worm, use a jig and pig setup, whatever it may be, slow it down. All right? Now with the bass, you'll find bass will stay shallower a little longer than the pike and walleye will. It's not uncommon to go out when the water temperature is 65 degrees, 70 degrees, and catch big bass in a little shallower, okay? Because largemouth is particularly do two things. Remember I told you the pike, some pike go out, or go out deep and suspend, some pike go out deep and land on the bottom, some pike go into the weeds 25 to 35 feet and sit there. Well. The largemouth, some groups will stay shallower longer than others. So you have a shallow group versus a deeper group. Okay? But in the heat of the summer, what happens is those shallower fish, they start to pull. And you'll find those fish in 25 to 35 feet of water off those deep cabbage breaks and those deep points within that percentage triangle. All right? Now, coming into fall time. When you're coming into fall, what's occurring? The light's starting to wane, correct? Starting to go away. That's triggering a quality in their brain that says, I gotta start eating. Just as a bear does when it's time to hibernate, so I can get through the winter, they're doing the same thing. Now the problem is, is most people put their boats away in September. Our boats never put away. Some of the biggest pike that we caught this year we're just after Thanksgiving, right up until that big snowstorm hit. Water temperature of 38 degrees. Our big walleyes, you guys see the night walleye show? Everybody wants to go do it. Says, hey, how do you do it? I did a seminar on it, I've done several. I still, seen it. I still never see anybody down there doing it because it's you know 15 degrees out at night. It's miserable, everything's freezing up, it's cold. Water temperature's dropping. You know, we've, we'll fish it until it's 45 degrees out down there, you know, water temperature-wise. Coldest night we ever had down there was 8 degrees. But it's triggering in their brain that I have to feed now the females in order to brood those eggs through winter to get through the starvation phase, all right? In the wintertime, they may only feed walleye, pike, or bass. They may only feed once a week, twice a week max. The metabolism is slow. They don't have to. 
They're living off reserves. They're not consuming a ton of energy by cruising the system. But also what's happened in the summertime, guys. Throughout the course of the summertime, remember all those fry that we talked about? Well, they've been consumed by other predators. Some have died, whatever it may be. You had 100% forage into the system. Now going into the fall time, that forage has died off. And the forage is also what? It's gotten bigger. It's grown over the course of the year. There's more food now back up, not necessarily all the way shallow, but towards the tip of the triangle in just a ways, not pushing all the way back in shallow. We're still staying out in that deeper section. But now there's more forage, so we've got, or we've got less forage, we've got cooler temperatures, we've got less light, now we have the urge, we've got to start feeding. So now when you go back out into the fall time, I'll show you an example here of, say, uh, what we have here. I'm trying to think of a spot that I can draw you guys that's going to make sense right here. Um, let me draw this spot like this. Okay. Okay, what we have here is we've got river channel going down through here like this. Okay. And this is a shallow area back into here. And this is a deeper cut. And within this deeper cut right here, we've got a cabbage bed. And off of this, it's say 17 to 20 feet. All right? Now what happens this time of year is what does green vegetation do, guys? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process of turning sunlight into oxygen. That's what plants do. You'll find that this stuff back in the backer end where it's shallower is not near as green as this stuff out here. For the bass and the pike, what we're doing is we're keying in on that green vegetation. Anything green that we can find that's in that deeper water, not all the way shallow, because this stuff is going to be dying off, but you're looking for this green cabbage bed. And it's going to be cabbage that you're going to find that's going to be green, okay? If you get back into that dead stuff, as that stuff is dying, as it dies, it consumes oxygen. What does a predator, what does a fish have to have in order to survive? Oxygen, correct? You hear about dissolved oxygen content. When you start getting down to five to six parts per million, that's not supporting a lot of life. You need seven to eight parts per million. That's what's happening in these green areas. What's that mean? Where's all that forage going to? It's going towards the oxygen, which is within the green vegetation. So you've condensed your forage into an area that is easy for you to find. Well, what does a predator want? He wants that forage. Now, the pike, his main process in the fall is the whitefish. Remember I told you whitefish spawn in the fall? That's what they want to eat. Now, the whitefish, what he wants to do is he wants to run up cricks, be it on like the Ponderay River. Uh, there are places within the river where they'll spawn in the river, gravel bars that are shallow, five to six feet. So that is going to draw that big pike to where that forage is at, which is his whitefish. He's going to key in on the mouth of cricks that are coming in. He's going to key in on those gravel bars. We caught a 30-pounder last fall in a spot that you would say that there should be no reason there's a pike here. It's just a big gravel bar. That's it. Well, the whitefish are there. Key in, though, guys, on that green vegetation, if you can at all possible, because that's going to draw everything in, even the walleyes. You know, walleyes will get in vegetation just as easy as they will rocks. Okay? You've got forage in there. You've got leeches. You've got microorganisms living within this. There's a food source. Now, as the water temperature cools, you're going to go through a phase where I did a show out at Coeur d'Alene Lake. Water temperature is about 49 degrees. You could throw your bucktail out there, inline spinner for the pike, and you could turn the handle as fast as you wanted to turn it, and you couldn't turn it fast enough to keep it away from them because they're at peak activity level. You can go out in October. This year it actually went in November, which surprised me out there to Roosevelt and troll fast with lead core line, husky jerk or deep diving shad wraps or tail dancers 
and hit those fish trolling fast. As that water temperature starts to get closer to 45, 40, down into 38, Chad and I did a show, Hayden Lake, last year. The lake was iced up. We were fishing on the edge of the ice on a deep cabbage bed that was green, adjacent to deep water. You would throw the jerk bait out. You would reel it down and you would sit there. And then you'd go kind of like this, or you would just turn the handle a little bit. And they'd just come up and go, just tap it. Because their metabolism slows, so you have to slow down. That goes for the same for the walleye, goes for the same for the pike, goes for the same for the bass. Catching pike and bass out there at Hayden Lake, 38 degrees on a hard bait, literally on the edge of the ice, casting sometimes between ice chunks. Okay? They're going as far as they can into that cooler water to put as much into their gut as they can to get as much reserve stored up. 